By the end of this unit, you will be able to define and use the terminology of probability and determine whether two events are mutually exclusive and if two events are independent. Furthermore, you will be able to calculate probabilities using the addition rule and the multiplication rule and to construct and interpret contingency tables, Venn and tree diagrams. This unit is titled Probability Topics. Of course, your first question is, what am I doing learning probability if I signed up for a statistics course? Fair question. The answer lies in the difference between probability and statistics. This difference is critical. To be brief, in the world of probability, we are ever, ever so smart. We know everything about what we're interested in. On the other hand, in the world of statistics, we are ignorant and we have only the smallest bit of information about our world. Take this example. Imagine we are interested in how many unique five-card playing hands we can get from a standard 52-card deck, or perhaps the number of heads we can get if we throw three coins in the air. This is the world of probability, and we know everything there is to know. We are oh so smart. We know how many cards are in the deck. We know how many are red, how many are black, or which have a number on the, or which faces there are on each card. As to the coins, we know how many heads and how many tails on each coin. I can now calculate probabilities for any configuration we may wish to examine. For example, the probability of getting a pair of aces in a five card hand, or the probability of getting three heads in a row if we flip three coins, or perhaps the probability of getting five heads in a row, or just five heads in any order if I throw seven coins. Any combination we can imagine. We can do this because we know the universe of all possible results. Now to the world of statistics. This is a dark and mysterious place. What we want is to understand about some population, say the average amount of student loan debt of graduating seniors, or the average number of hours studied by all the students in this statistics class before the last exam. To help us, we can sample, meaning we look at a small group from the population. But this is like reaching into a black box while sitting in a dark room with your eyes blindfolded. But that's exactly what we will be doing, making inferences about the population based on a sample. Let's say we're interested in the proportion of people who will vote in favor of the upcoming bond issue for the new school in town. We really know nothing other than perhaps what our friends say. That is hardly a foundation for policy. Our response is to sample some of the voters. With that information, we will make an estimate of the true population proportion of voters who favor the bond issue. This will be an estimate, and an estimate is not a probability. A probability is a real number. It tells us the exact chances of a particular outcome. If I know the actual percentage of the total population who favor the bond issue, I can calculate the probability of drawing a supporter if I randomly selected one person. I can also calculate the exact probability of drawing five supporters from a group of 20, or 250 supporters from a group of 300, and so on. But I have to know the views of the total population to find a probability. I do not need to know the views of the total population to make an estimate. Only the views of a sample of people, if the sample is randomly drawn, as discussed earlier. As another example, it is a probability of one half that a head will be the outcome if you flip a coin, and this is not an estimate. If we tried to say this as an estimate, the syntax of our very language stops us and shows us the difference. How might we try to say it? I estimate that the outcome will be a head. This doesn't even sound right to us. This is because this is not an estimate. It is purely your speculation, and we can see right away it conveys no meaning. We will, however, develop methods to estimate the proportion of people that will vote in favor of the bond issue. That will be an estimate. We will be able to say, for example, that we estimate 47% of the voters will be in favor of the school bond issue. So why are we studying probability if we are never going to know the numbers for the total population? The answer lies in the central limit theorem. Without this theorem, there would be no statistics as we know it. The central limit theorem allows us to convert 
a statistics problem into a probability problem. In a later unit, we will use this theorem to move us from the darkness of statistics to the bright world of probability, where we can calculate an estimate, where we can assign a probability to an estimate, where we may say, I estimate that the proportion of people who will vote in favor of the bond issue lies between 45% and 49%. Our estimate will have a probability attached, say 90% sure, rather than be simple, raw speculation with no foundation for measuring its accuracy. So we begin in the world of probability, where we are the masters of all knowledge and will become capable of calculating the probability of events. Here we will develop the terminology of probability to help us be precise in our words. We will develop two very important rules of probability, and we will learn how to count because we will learn probability is ultimately just plain, simple, everyday counting.